Here, we'll look at how we can decrease the solubility of a compound using what is called the common ion effect. As an example, we'll consider a saturated solution of lead to chloride, or PbCl2. Its solubility equilibrium equation is written like this, with the solid on the left and its dissolved ions on the right. Here is a diagram representing the saturated PbCl2 solution. Like all saturated solutions, there is some solid on the bottom. Now we obtain a dropping pipette filled with NaCl solution. NaCl is highly soluble. We add this NaCl solution to the saturated PbCl2 solution. Notice that the amount of precipitate slowly increases. Now we'll go back to before we added the NaCl and focus on the ions in these solutions. The saturated lead 2 chloride solution contains Pb2 plus and Cl minus ions and the NaCl solution in the pipette contains Na plus and Cl minus ions. Na plus ions are spectator ions, so we can discard them. So when we add the NaCl solution, we're actually adding Cl minus ions to the beaker. Now we'll focus on the solubility equilibrium equation and what happens when we add NaCl solution to the saturated PbCl2 solution. We started with only the saturated PbCl2 solution. Because lead 2 chloride has low solubility, it contains low concentrations of Pb2 plus and Cl minus ions. Next, we started adding aqueous NaCl solution to the saturated PbCl2 solution. NaCl adds Cl minus ions to the saturated solution. We can see that this increased the concentration of Cl minus ions in the beaker. The Chatelier's principle tells us this increased concentration of Cl minus ions will cause the equilibrium to shift to the left. We start back at the beginning with the original equilibrium before we added the sodium chloride. The graphs below will show what happens to the mass of PbCl2 and the concentrations of the ions as we carry out the whole process. The initial mass of PbCl2 is represented by this red dot on the left graph here. The initial concentration of Pb2 plus is represented by this red dot on the middle graph here. And the initial concentration of Cl minus is represented by this red dot on the right graph here. In a saturated PbCl2 solution, the concentration of Cl- is twice the concentration of Pb2+, because the coefficient ratio in the equation is 2 to 1. If the original equilibrium is left undisturbed, the mass of the solid and the concentrations of the ions remain constant. When we add the NaCl, the concentration of chloride ions quickly increases. In order to compensate for the increased concentration of Cl-, the equilibrium will now shift to the left. Watch the equation in the graphs as this shift occurs. Here's the shift. This is what we're left with after the shift. Looking at the graph on the right for the chloride ion, we see its concentration increased when we added the NaCl. And as the shift to the left occurred, the concentration of Cl- partially decreased, as shown by this curve on the graph. During the shift to the left, the concentration of Pb2 plus is also decreased, but only half as much as the Cl-. This again is due to the 1 to 2 coefficient ratio of Pb2 plus to Cl-. And during that same shift to the left, the mass of solid PbCl2 increased. Now that the shift is complete, a new equilibrium has been established, and the ion concentrations and the mass of the solid will remain constant. Looking at the graph for the chloride ion concentration, we see that from the very beginning of the process to the very end, there was a small net increase in the concentration of Cl-. Moving over to the graph of Pb2 plus concentration, we see that from the very beginning to the very end of the process, there was a net decrease in the concentration of Pb2+. And moving over to the graph for the mass of solid PbCl2 on the left,
from the very beginning to the very end, there was a net increase in the mass of this solid precipitate. An increase in its mass means more solid PBCl2 is now present, which means that the solubility of PBCl2 has been decreased. And remember, it was decreased as a result of adding NaCl to the solution. So we can summarize by saying that adding a solution of the soluble salt NaCl to a saturated solution of PBCl2 caused the solubility of PBCl2 to decrease. Notice that the soluble compound NaCl and the low solubility compound PBCl2 both contain the chloride ion. We say that they have the chloride ion in common. Whenever a low solubility compound and a soluble salt added to it both contain the same ion, we say that they have an ion in common. In this case, it's the chloride ion. Remember, we had shown that adding the soluble salt, NaCl, decreased the solubility of the low solubility compound, PBCl2. This is called the common ion effect. The common ion effect can be stated as follows. Whenever a soluble ionic compound is added to a saturated solution of a low solubility compound, and they contain an ion in common, the addition of the soluble compound will decrease the solubility of the low solubility compound. In the example that we went through, we started with saturated PBCl2, and we added the soluble compound NaCl, which increased the concentration of Cl- in the saturated solution. This caused the equilibrium to shift left, which increased the amount of PBCl2 precipitate in the beaker, and therefore decreased its solubility. We could also add the soluble compound PBNO3 too. The two solutions contain the PB2 plus ion in common. The addition of aqueous lead to nitrate will increase the concentration of PB2 plus in the saturated solution, which will cause the equilibrium to shift left. The shift left will increase the amount of solid PBCl2 precipitate. Thus, it will decrease its solubility.